and welcome everyone! Today we're gonna talk about how I started playing music and how I started the Nihais. I got this suggestion on my last video and I thought that that would be a fun little topic to do. So let's start with just maybe a little bit of a backstory. Growing up, I always was super into performing, music, theater, dance. I've done dance since I was like six years old. I did theater all growing up, like even when I was younger, I went to acting camps and theater camps and was in all different kinds of choirs, regional choirs, different church choirs, different school choir, things that you could be a part of, different just local groups that would get together after you had like an audition type of a thing. And you would sing for whatever events were going on, practice maybe once every month or something like that. I played alto saxophone when I was like in fourth and fifth grade and then I quit because I felt like our music teacher at the school was really creepy. But so I was always just super into that. My childhood dream uh, was to be a fashion designer and to be on Broadway. And so there was always that element of loving to perform and loving to entertain. And I, like many other people who I've learned as an adult, would basically force a group of friends or your cousins or something to learn a dance and then put on a show for your family or like the teachers. My friends and I had a dance group that we would all pick a song and choreograph a dance at recess and then go in front of the class and show them and sometimes we'd have like assemblies at the school and performers would come and I remember there was this like boy kind of group from a nearby college that came and all of us in third grade just thought those guys were so adorable, right? So of course we had to pull them aside and perform one of our dances for them, which I just think is hilarious looking back on. Always singing, always dancing, always wanting to perform. My poor cousins and brother luckily were so nice and willing and I cannot tell you how many different productions of Phantom of the Opera we put on in my garage making a chandelier out of uh, like solo plastic cups and my mom being super mad because we didn't have a lot of extra money and uh, she was mad that I used all of her plastic cups so sorry mom but just always had like such a deep love for music when I was an adult I was surrounded by people doing music like I knew that I had such a love and passion for music and like specifically rock and roll like 60s and 70s 80s you know old kind of rock and roll style music that I knew when I was looking for a partner that they would need to be just as obsessed as I was otherwise it just wasn't going to work out because it was such a big part of my personality and who I was and then I found Andrew who's my fiance if you don't know and he is a professional musician so when I first got together with him and moved to Chicago which is where he lived and now we both together. Um, I was mostly surrounded by his friends. I didn't really make friends for a while and they were all musicians as well. So I'm just surrounded by people playing music. I loved going to shows like that was, if I had the moment to go to a show that was like the peak of what I was excited for that week or you know month or whatever it, was, it remained a huge love and interest in my heart being surrounded by all these people who I felt like were super good and really professional and I was just too nervous to even sing in front of him for like the longest time but I just felt like super intimidated by the fact that he was a professional and I felt like I didn't really know what I was doing and it was just silly that I was so nervous by it but I had this deep yearning inside of me of still really wanting to do that stuff but I was kind of like stopping myself just because I don't know I was afraid of like looking like I didn't know what I was doing or being you know foolish in front of him and like his friends and everybody else who I thought was uh, so had everything figured out which looking back now it's like nobody has anything figured out everybody's just winging it um, it really takes me a long time to open up to people so I feel like that also played a part of it because I was thrust into this world where I didn't really have anybody or anything familiar. Everything changed. 
um, which just caused like a lot of anxiety in my life, which was nobody's fault. Um, it's just something that I had to learn to deal with, you know? So there was all of that and just uncertainty, but always wanting to do it, always wanting to play music, always wanting to entertain, perform, um, but just being too, too nervous to do anything about it. Fast forward maybe a couple years, it was like, the summer of 2019 and I remember that spring I was having like really vivid dreams which most of my dreams are like the same thing over and over again or the same kind of a theme the same place over and over again most of the time it's like I'm on a boat and I'm trying to rescue like my family or something like that or I'm in the cabins and I'm like running away from some weird mythical creature like the hodag um, so just like bizarre different kinds of dreams but then that spring of 2019 I remember I was having these dreams where I was on stage playing music playing a bass guitar and I had just gotten into Susie Quattro like super heavily right around that time too I was really in love with her music and her style and just felt super inspired but then I was having these dreams where I was up on stage playing bass to like a huge audience of people and I didn't really ever look around on the stage just because I the only thing I can really remember is like having the guitar in my hand and looking out at like the lights and like a sea of people and I think I brought it up to Andrew and um, he was like well why don't you just try to play bass like you know I can teach you you can do this it would be super fun it doesn't have to be anything but for yourself and so I wanted to give it a try because you know sometimes I would do like hand claps or a shaker or something and I was trying to push my comfortability level of being able to sing in front of him. So I had been, you know, trying to sing in the car a little bit, step outside of my comfort zone and slowly but surely I was getting more comfortable with doing that in front of him. I decided to give the bass a try since I was doing this, you know, pushing my boundaries, trying to do what I know I wanted deep down inside but I was also really scared to do. Oh no, my hiccups came back so this might be a difficult video to get through. So I was playing bass a little bit with Andrew and then Andrew's sister is also a musician and originally we were starting a band together. It was going to be me, her, and then another really great guitarist who lives in the Chicago area. Um, I won't say her name because I don't know if she would be okay with that, but um, she was super nice. We had a few practices um, and I was like so fresh at playing bass. I really did not know what I was doing at all and going in with two other people who had been playing music basically all of their life and kept up with it like Andrew's sister was in college going for music and uh, basically teaching piano lessons and then the other girl is such an amazing guitarist pretty well known online like has a decent following and I just felt like I have no idea what I'm doing here it was really really intimidating they were super nice and like it was nothing that they did but I feel like that situation just knowing that I was so far behind them was really stressful but we did have a lot of fun and it was a great experience just to get started and start trying to do something so we were doing that um, for a little bit I had known Alice my bandmate for a year at that point I think I met her in 2018 and then I had known Ash and Chris who are my other bandmates I think maybe like 2018 as well or 2017 like end of the year I had met them at a show Ash and I had first talked on um, Instagram a little bit but like never met up in person or anything and it was just like a few things that we had said to each other a few words were exchanged um, but then I ran into them at a show and immediately I recognized them because they are both like goddesses, super tall, um, just stand out amongst a crowd. So I had seen them and it was actually like a wild, absolutely bizarre story of a night that I was meeting them. It was chaotic to say the least, but I won't go into that. 
Um, meeting them was wonderful and nice and great in every way, but like the other stuff that was going on that evening was absolute chaos. So it was, yeah, it was like early 2018. Um, I had met them. So we had known each other for a little bit and we had become pretty good friends, you know, seeing each other at shows, hanging out here and there at their house, going to the farm, you know, spending the summer together. And then in 2018, yeah, it was like early, early 2018 that I met Ash and Chris. And then it was late 2018 for my birthday that I met Alice. Cause she had messaged me on Instagram about doing some modeling for her vintage store that she owned at the time. And in that message, I was like, you know, my birthday party's this weekend, why don't you come out? I'd love to meet you there. And so she did, and then we ended up shooting together and it was a really fun time. And um, the rest was basically history. But so we were all friends then. They had met each other at my birthday party as well, Ash, Chris, and Al. For a long time, we'd all go to shows together. Like some of our greatest, closest friends were in a band together and pretty uh, poppin' in the Chicago scene, I would say. They were the act that a lot of people would go and see. So it was kind of, you know, a great social event that we'd all get together and go out and dance at the shows and have fun. And for a long time, we would just joke like, let's just start a band. Why don't we start a band? We're gonna start a band. And there's literally a picture of Al and I after one of Andrew's shows that we had went to together up on the stage holding the guitars, pretending that we're playing. Uh, and we were joking that night that we were gonna start a band. So back to the summer of 2019, I was playing with Andrew's sister and the other guitarist from Chicago for a little bit and we were trying to get something started and It just didn't feel right. I felt like I was gonna be holding them back But I knew that I wanted to do something like I was loving playing the bass. It was super fun It was giving me like more confidence in myself just you know seeing that I could do this thing that I really wanted to do and that was brand new to me and like super outside of my comfort zone and I was loving it and I was having more of those dreams where I was playing on stage and I was like okay I love this this is super fun I'm not having the nightmares anymore or I'm on a boat and it's sinking I think that's some past life stuff but yeah then I don't really remember how it ended that other band that I was in. I don't think that we had even picked out a name. We were just like rehearsing together for a little bit. I cannot honestly for the life of me remember how that ended, but it ended on good terms. Like nobody was mad or upset or hurt by it. I feel like I would have remembered that more. It was just like something that kind of fizzled out, I feel like. So I was still just playing bass by myself and I think that Al knew that. And she had like a ukulele that she would play basically all the time when I'd go over to her house before we started a band. So she already knew how to play some stuff. Like she knew strumming patterns, she kind of knew how to do chords and whatever. And she had a guitar that she said that she'd play with once in a while. And so I think just one day we were like, why don't we actually just start a band? Like I'm playing an instrument, you're playing an instrument. We are always joking about this. Like this can be as serious as we want it to be, you know? why not just go for it and basically we did we just i think each picked out three songs that we wanted to learn and the two of us got together at my house and like our first couple of practices were literally us just sitting in front of the microphones and being like toddlers listening to our voices go through the loudspeakers and having fun <laughs> with that like i feel no, it's hilarious thinking about Andrew in the other room listening to us just being like uh, and like making whale noises and um, screaming into the microphones pretty much. And so that was super, super fun. And then we just picked like a couple of those songs. Like I had said, we each had a few that we wanted to learn and we learned them together and we started playing and I wonder if I can find any videos of those and put those up. I think when we started playing together, it was like fall. So I had had the whole summer of just playing around the bass myself, you know, just having a good old grand time with it. And then after us having a few practices together where we yelled in the microphones and smashed and strummed away on our instruments, we finally decided that at this point, maybe 
we should look for a drummer. And we definitely wanted it to be an all-girl group. Like right from the start, we loved the dynamic of the two of us. We also loved that we both didn't really know what we were doing. So it was like a low pressure atmosphere. Like I said, our practices were basically just fucking around the whole time um, and experimenting, if you want to call it that, to put it in a nice way. Uh, <laughs> we really wanted to find somebody who was like on the same page preferably some feminine presenting person because we were just loving the vibes and it's not very often that you find, you know, all girl rock bands. Like again, I will say I was really inspired by Suzy Quattro and her first band was the Pleasure Seekers in the 60s which consisted of her, also her sisters, um, and it was just an all-female group. And so I was loving, loving, loving that. And I know Al was as well, we were both like on the same page of just wanting it to be a female group. So I made a little post and I put it on my Instagram story, basically just said that we are trying to start a band and we're looking for a drummer in the Chicago area, preferably a girl. And guess what? To my surprise as well as Al's, the person who responded right away was our friend Chris who I had no idea that Chris drummed, but she said that she used to drum in like sixth grade and didn't have a drum kit currently, but wanted to get back into it and was ready and willing basically. And then she also said that Chris's sister Ash, also our friend, had a guitar and played guitar a little bit and also wanted to, you know, hunker down and like do something a little more seriously. So it was kind of like written in the stars. Everything just came together really perfectly. Not only were we all women or feminine presenting, we were all already friends, all got along great together, all liked the same kind of music, and we were all basically just starting out having really no idea what we were doing. Didn't really know music terminology. Like I said, I did choir so I can read music. You know, I know basic stuff, but none of us knew like actual, like what chord is this? Oh, you're on the four chord. Okay, you're, then we go to the blah, 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 three, five, whatever. Like there's so much that honestly we're still learning um, for like music theory, but it was just so perfect. It was like, absolutely too good to be true. And then as far as a name, I remember it was before we had asked Ash and Chris to join that Al and I were trying to figure out a name and we both were just like shooting out different ideas of whatever. We had like a whole list and I was thrifting a lot of the time, um, I think for bundles. One time I got this package of vintage tights and I can probably pop up the picture here, but it said um, fashion, 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 knee highs. And I was like, ooh, I like that. I like knee highs, the knee highs. Okay, that's sick. So I told that to Al, Al loved it as well. And we basically just went through and voted on our favorites, narrowed it down, and then asked like close people in our circle what they thought of different names too, and kind of got other people's opinions or, you know, maybe somebody had thought of something that we hadn't, like if a name made them think of one thing and we didn't want to be associated with that one thing, or, you know, somebody could take something one way, or it's just nice to get other people's opinions on things. So we did that and ultimately ended up deciding on the knee highs. And yeah, then December, I think it's 6th, what, 2019 was our first official practice. We told them like a couple songs to practice and to come ready to play. I know Melvin was the first song that we ever played together, ever learned like as a group. And that night we got together, we played it, we took a photo, we called it official. And um, then like the next weekend, uh, we were celebrating my birthday party and my friend who was playing a set at this local dive bar that I loved going to and I used to go to it all the time 
Um, it was only like 11 minutes from my house, so it was just like a short, you know, little jaunt over. Um, he asked us to get up and play <laughs> one of our songs, and we were like, okay, yeah, we have no idea what we're doing, but let's do it. So we showed up to the dive bar thinking that it was just going to be nobody's there. You know, it's kind of like hit or miss. I feel like there's always a big crowd there when there's certain bands that come through, but normally it's like the regulars kind of a vibe. So that's what I expected is just the regulars. And we get there and the place is packed and there's no drum kit because the band that was playing, I guess, didn't have drums. So <laughs> Chris was like, well, I have a tambourine in the car. If you've never tried to play a tambourine, uh, you don't know this, but if you have tried to play a tambourine, you know that tambourine is a lot harder than you would think it is to play. Like, to get it to sound decent, it's not an easy instrument to work with, as easy as one would think, I feel like. And they're just so loud that they just cut through everything. So if you're playing one, you've got to play it well. So Chris is outside practicing the tambourine because she's never played a tambourine before and we hadn't practiced it without drums or anything but we got up there we played we got over our nerves it was a grand old time it was our first performance and um so became the knee highs we were really really lucky with how everything panned out like i said we had already been really close friends we knew each other um, we were all comfortable with each other and like I also expressed at the beginning, starting to play instruments or just playing music in general um, is a very vulnerable thing to do, especially when you don't know what you're doing. So it was nice being in an area where I felt uh, supported and comfortable with the people who I was trying to learn with and it was really nice that we were all on the same page of trying to figure out what we were doing so it wasn't like one person sitting there waiting while the rest of us are trying to, you know, figure out X, Y, and Z. And then we all like the same music for the most part. Of course, we have different preferences and different, um, you know, specifics and different main inspirations. But for the most part, we all like the same music and like the same sound. So when we're writing songs, I feel like everybody really enjoys every song and it's not like one person is just going through the motions kind of a thing. And from the beginning, we all wanted it to be where everybody had the chance to do whatever they wanted to. It's not that one person's the singer. It's not that anything is in any set rules. It's, this is just supposed to be like something that's fun for us, something that we enjoy doing in a creative outlet. Um, my main goal with the knee highs, like I kind of said, is to have fun. And I just wanna show other people specifically other young women or feminine presenting people that there is a place in music for you. Hi. Hey. Yeah. 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 Here comes Andrew. Andrew, what do you have to say for anybody who wants to start a band? Just start doing it right now and love it. <laughs> okay, that's all. <laughs> yeah, honestly, just start doing something because I wish that I would have started earlier, but you know, better late than never. And I just hope that the knee highs show people that, um, that it's really not too late. We had no idea what we were doing when we were starting. All like mid, early to mid 20s vibes um, so I feel like kind of late in the game you know but here we are going on tour um, getting some really cool opportunities just hope that we show other people that it's possible and that there's a place in music for you and there's an audience for you and um, there's a place for your art to be out in the world and if you want it to be seen by people, it should be seen by people. So just do it for you, do it to create and um, to fulfill that like yearn that you have in your heart. Um, so yeah, I hope that this is helpful. I hope that this gets you excited to go play some music or even if it's not music, like just go do whatever it is you wanna do. This can all be applied to 
I feel like any creative endeavor that you are looking to start, like if you want to start crocheting or start you know painting murals or whatever it is like just get out there and do it for the sake of doing it and fulfilling that need that's inside of you and that longing to create because that's what life is about baby so i love you all lots i hope you're doing well and i will catch you in the next one hopefully on tour like comment if you're coming along if you're not coming to one of the shows physically we are going to be live streaming two of the nights originally we were going to do three so if you heard that we just cut it down to two now and um, we're going to be live streaming may 5th and 6th both of those shows are in new york city come to friday we're going to be live streaming them if you want to buy a live stream ticket you can venmo vinny has five dollars in the little comment section on your purchase or payment or whatever um, make sure you give us your email because that's how we're gonna send you the unlisted link to the live stream and also send us the date of which night you want to be sent the link to whether it's Friday or Saturday night before we go for tour we will be sending out confirmation emails to let you know that we received your payment and your email and then we'll add you to a group email that we'll send out the night of that show um, that we'll include the link of and you'll get that right before our set starts. So that's basically what's going on. Hope to see some of you on tour or I hope to see you in the chat on the live stream on one of those nights. See you all later. See you whenever I see ya. Love ya.